Hello and welcome. My name is <clears throat> Daffy Roth, and this is my YouTube channel in which we're playing the voice of cards, Beast of Burden for the PC. Uh, in our last episode, we uh, descended into hell, quite literally, the Lake of Fire, uh, in which um, the monsters are acting precarious. Precarious. I can't say that word. Very peculiar. Probably because we're invading their home and killing all of them. It's going to be my guess. Uh, but at this point, a, uh, a member of the... Um, there's two orphans uh, that are hungry. And apparently there is an aristocrat that uh, whose son or daughter, in other words, child, is dying of poisoning. Which may be the result of the fire primal. So we're going to go kill Ifrit. That's just what we do. So uh, we left off. We built a bridge, and we're, we're closing that gap. Oops. <clears throat> Oh, it's another, uh... As if crossing over a lake of fire weren't enough, your path is once again blocked by flames. You quickly survey your surroundings and see more parts you might be able to fashion into a bridge. You call upon the steel primal once more and prepare to improvise another bridge. All right. You've made it once again, but before you can celebrate, you're greeted by an expanse of tinder water. You summon the steel primal a third time and hope this is the last bridge you need build. But the pieces the primal hauls out of the tinder water don't look like they'll fit together. You look back at the bridges that brought you here. Alas, you've built them too well. They won't come loose from the rocks, so you'll have to make do. Trollis, seeing the worry on your face, chirps encouragingly. Search. We will find. Must be way. The Trollis is awesome. Um, let's start with this one. Okay, maybe not. All right, so I guess we only have one choice. Uh, in order to move forward, place nothing. We'll go this way. Fire stay ring. Uh, let's do equipment. Oh wait, we want to set up. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, we only have the one piece. And it's going to say it can't connect, right? Oh, well, maybe not. Inside is impossibly <laughs> a bridge part. You should be able to use this to get further across the tinder water. The number of bridge parts you can place is increased. Hey, there's just a bridge part sitting in a chest. Uh, yeah, let's remove it. Trollis gazes intently at you. She's noted your mastery of the Steel Primal's power. She explains that ever since she was picked up by the circus at a young age, she's trained as a beast tamer. However, as she puts it, she has not managed to improve in the slightest. I wished and wished, wished didn't come true, understanding each other very hard. She asks you to give her some pointers on how to get monsters to obey. And you reply, Subjugation. There's not really any trick to you giving an order, I just do it. Dot, dot, dot. monster wreathed in flames rises from the lake. It's shrouded in such heat and fury that you can scarcely turn your eyes to it. This is, in all likelihood, the Flame Primal. Your party readies their weapons and prepares for a fight. Lay this beast for the children. For the children. All right, let's deliberate. You can't tell if it has something to do with the primal, but poison is slowly coursing through you. You must end this battle quickly.
Oh man, it's getting worse. This defense down though is gonna really hurt. Do I have a pack of um fantasies? It does not appear so. It's got an achievement. Um, Brother, I love you, but you just are not doing very well. Alright, let's see if she can close this here. Not close, but a cigar. Alright, finish this off. You've managed to gain the advantage on your foe, but suddenly you feel as if suffocated and fall upon one knee. Your poisoned body is screaming, raging in protest. The Flame Primal clearly isn't going to let this chance pass it up, and it begins amassing power. Not good. Ew, watch out. Dodge right. Barely thinking, you go right, attempting to dodge the Primal's attack. But your foot catches on something, and you trip and fall to the ground. You shut your eyes, believing this might be the end of you. I zigged when I should have zagged. But the pain you brace yourself for doesn't come. You wonder what's happened, and open your eyes to see. Trollis, that ring. you scream. She turns to you and gives a pained smile. I protect everyone. The acrid smell of burning meat assaults your nostrils, and Trollis cries out in anguish. Still, she desperately musters her strength and pushes back the flame primal. Trollis has given you and your friends a chance. You stand, and together you and your comrades attack the primal with all your strength. Unbelievable. These wretches dare steal my power? You've done it. You've beaten the Flame Primal and sealed it within a card.
The flames upon the lake begin to recede and then blink out entirely. Perhaps because you've beaten the flame primal? Did we just cause an ecological disaster? You see Trollis crouching on the ground and run over to her. Are you all right? You ask. She totters to her feet. Having rather shrewdly managed to gather some of the Flame Primal's bodily fluids during the fight, Polka immediately sets about inspecting it to determine its composition. What could this mean? To the great surprise of all, he does not detect any trace of poison in the fluid. Could something else be the cause? Find the source of the poison at the Lake of Fire. You cannot use bellwethers now. Uh, that's fine. Polka collects some of the lake water in a bottle. He then busies himself dipping various papers and medicinal compounds into the bottle. At length, he makes a curious face. Source is this tender water. According to Polka, burning the water releases toxins that accumulate and can cause fatal harm to the human body. Your party decides to head back to the City of Flame and inform the aristocrat of your findings. Report back to the aristocrat in the City of Flame. You can now use bellwethers. However, I'm not going to do that. I got to capture a couple monsters, so I will pause the game and I will be back. We'll pause the recording anyways. I'll be back uh, once I get that. And uh, yeah, so see you in a second. All right, and I am back and I did manage to get the two cards that uh, the uh, well, I'm not going to worry about getting the second star for the green one. I uh, can get that later, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, I did get the, the purple slime and then the toad, so we're good. Um, but that also reminded me that we do have some cards to read, so let's, let's do this before we head in there. The magma tortoise. When withdrawn into its shell, this creature is often mistaken for valuable ore, resulting in many a severely burnt hand. Armies venturing to colder climate take these creatures along for warmth. Apparently, they can also make great projectiles to hurl at enemies. <laughs> Mario. Uh, the Venom Slime. Is it my purple form beautiful? I carefully control my diet to remain just the right shade. I killed my friend. It had to be done. They said green was prettier than purple. Can you believe that? Now, which do you like better? Um, I believe we already did that one. But just in case, my research leads me to believe the flip flip sounds of these crit uh, critters opening and closing their caps are a form of communication. I figured it out. The sounds are smyrnal atonement for killing the prey. Hmm? Something's making a racket behind me. Yeah, that one we already did. Uh, Tail Toad. Long, long ago, people told stories of a monster that would turn into a prince if kissed by a princess. It was quite popular and survived for several generations. In retrospect, it was likely the fact that touching this creature, let alone kissing it, can poison you to death that caused the story to fall out of favor. I like that it's a, a prince being turned into a... Well, okay. I guess that is how it goes, isn't it? Uh, Ogre, these massive stone axes are generational heirlooms. Uh, these beasts hunt down adventurers holding fast to memories of their ancestors. We haven't unlocked the flip side yet. Flame Primal, I'm so hungry, but it'd be so mean to eat them. I have to hold back. I should be able to avoid them if I stay where nothing grows. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Uh, oh yeah, then we have some characters. The circus tamer girl is a hard worker, but she messes everything up. But she fails again today, the others will laugh it off. I love her though. Um. Yeah, that one we already did. Sure, woman, slot. Um. The Simon Bad once lacked confidence in his own circus troupe that changed when he made the acquaintance of a white bird. The bird could speak, so to help his confidence, he had it whispered, My show is a great show in the world, in his ear over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, I think we did all these. Uh, the Aristocat? Well. Uh, the orphans. Excuse me, traveler. Will you give us some food? No, I'm sure you wouldn't. I've never met a traveler who'd be so nice. Those are some wonderful clothes you're wearing, traveler. Oh, I bet we can get so much good food to eat with the money from selling them. Overheated man. This man evidently used to make a living slaying monsters, but injured his leg and retired. <laughs> I think he must have taken an arrow to his knee. Since doing so, he has led a comfortable life. King clutched in his hand. Countless adventuring lives were spared in the wake of his retirement, as he was wont killing, as he was wont to kill competi competing hunters, so he could keep all the monsters slain profits himself. Oh, what a dick! A uh, knowledgeable old woman, an unmarried old woman who knows all the happenings of the city of flame. Should the corner, should she corner fellows and she'll treat them to an exhibition of her extensive knowledge. People tend to give the shady old woman a wide berth, but she has wisely changed her approach. By conveying the air of knowledgeable person, she tempts travelers into speaking with her. Ah, I see. Alright, and that takes care of that. Now that we cause an ecological disaster. With the flames of the lake extinguished, those of the pond in the center of the city have also gone out. The people seem frantic to reignite the tinder water once more. No! Come back, flames! The passionate woman is screaming herself hoarse coughing and sputtering as she points in shock at the pond where the fire has gone out. The fire in my heart has gone out with all the rest, the man mutters before sinking to the ground, his arms hanging limp. Yeah, I don't feel bad for you whatsoever. The lad is all smiles and mirth claiming that if he were to invent a tool to start fires, he could make a killing. Despite his sunny attitude, though, he looks quite unwell. Yeah, probably because they're all poison. I see the... With a trembling hand, the knowledgeable old woman strikes a knife against stone, muttering, This'll get it burning. I'm sure it will. They're still hungry, huh? All right. Polka's medicine succeeds in stabilizing the child's condition. I should have found a shit ton of freaking antidotes in there. However, he is quick to indicate that it is but a stopgap measure. Polka advises that should they wish to prolong the life of the child and of all those in the city, they must stop using the tinder water. The aristocrat shakes his head and says, that we cannot do. Uh, well, then you're all gonna die. It would benefit your child too, you assert, but he shakes his head again, unmoved. 
He explains that the tinder water is the basis of all life here in the city. The city would fall into decline if they were to stop using it, and most of the citizens would be set adrift with no means of supporting themselves. I am in charge of this city, and I cannot stop our use of tinder water, even if it costs the life of my child. Ask someone about the solution. Polka's voice is quiet. I cannot claim to understand how those who rule over others make their choices. Hmm. Trollis scratches her chin, clearly racking her brain. She replies at last, No, no. You ask the man if there is some way to resolve this impasse. He grimaces and makes a self-deprecating snort. Maybe if Nutera existed, then all would be solved. I got a card. Hmm. It's going to be a place. You ask if Nutera is some kind of place and Polka nods. Polka explains, Nutera is said to be a mysterious land abundant with all manner of resources. The aristocrat picks up the thread. Scholars claim it exists beyond the river to the northwest, but none who go there ever return. With that, the man gives you a large amount of food and sends you away from the manor. Oh, lots of food. An impressive amount of food given to you by the Aristocat City of Flame. Bring the food from the Aristocat to the orphans. Uh, we filled the Aristocat's flip side story. You hand the food out to the orphans. How did you get this? The boy asks. You explain that you received it as a reward from the aristocrat. Hearing this, the boy blurts out, I'm going to use the burning water to get rich too. The boy mentioned that his parents died due to illness. Likely they were stricken with the toxins from the tinder water. Just like the aristocrat's child. No. You tell the boy that the tinder water isn't good for him, but he replies, I don't care. Well, you can't worry about your health tomorrow if you starve to death today. The boy thanks you for the food and runs off with his sister. Polka has a difficult to read expression on his face. Let's at least hand out the medicine. He suggests. You nod without uttering a word. And out the medicine to the people of the city of flame. You offer some medicine to the man, but he keeps repeating, No, I'm good, as though in a delirium. The woman accepts the medicine from you. With a pained wink, she says, not that this medicine could cure lovesickness. Ain't that the truth. I'm gonna get rich and buy my sister all the yummy food she can eat, the boy tells you. You offer medicine to the children, but their faces drop. This won't fill our tummies they say with considerable disappointment. Did they already eat all the food? Jeez. You give some medicine to the ambitious young man, and he is jubilant. Yes, I can work even more now. Well, at least he's the only one that's had, like... You offer some medicine to the old woman, but she puts up a hand and refuses it. 
I'm afraid I don't make a habit of taking medicines I've never seen before. Oh, can't blame her on it that doesn't one. look like the people of the city are going to stop using tinder water anytime soon. The medicine you shared with them may provide little more than brief peace of mind. I can't believe they won't give it up. They know it's poisonous, you say in a low, pained voice. Legol gives you a sympathetic thump on the shoulder. You look up at him and ask, do you think everyone could be happy if we went to New Terra? His denial is immediate and assured. New Terra is a fairy tale. You answer him in a small voice. I want to look for it anyways. We might find hope there. Polka looks positively delighted. Why, yes. Now that calls to my scholarly soul. Trollis seems equally on board. I go too. She says, smiling. In the face of your united enthusiasm for the idea, Legol grunts, Fine, if you insist. You and your friends have made up your minds. You shall seek new Terra and whatever hope it offers, believing it exists just like the stars in the sky. Leave the city of flame. That's right, because the sun doesn't set. Uh, we're good on armor. Right. Oh, I don't have this yet. Oh, that's good. us everything so far. I want to sell some of these anti boots. are just pointless, so we'll keep those. Uh, bellwethers, I'm not gonna keep those. Oh, am I ever gonna run from a fight? Because I already got that sheet, so. You need some spear elixirs. We'll buy two of those. Good lord, there. So. Um, and we will also buy a bunch of these because I did end up using. Uh, the ones that we did have to get the uh... 
All right, ask. The city has done nothing about the poison and likely never will. Now that you've left, it would be safest if you never returned. Oh, I'm fine with that. You can no longer return to the City of Flame. Go out, yeah. Like, ah, they're dead. Their travels take them. To a city built around a burning lake. Its children are hungry. It's aristocrat too anxious over poison to act. To save the city, our heroes must defeat a mighty foe. The Flame Primal. The poison, however, remains. Its source is nothing less than the flame and water on which a city relies. Still, the people carry on using it, knowing full well when it is what ails them. With heavy hearts, our heroes set out and search for a Mutera. Chapter 4 Guiding Light. Chapters are really fast in this game. Your group surveys the land beyond the river that the aristocrats spoke of. He claimed that none who go there ever return, yet you've little choice but to brave what lies beyond. Cross the large river to the northwest of the City of Flame. The poison continues to issue forth from the city. Considering the danger, it would be wise to give the place a wide berth. Um, well, guess we'll go here. A great river of tinder water stretches out before you. While the liquid no longer burns, it would still be dangerous to attempt swimming. You start to hesitate, thinking that there is no crossing. When Polka shouts, da -na -na -na, he is carrying an iron board, apparently having brought it back from the Lake of Fire. Just as before, you and your allies decide to build a bridge across the river. Cross the bridge, spanning the river, and continue on. Get him. Ooh, new monsters. Oh, I need to equip the flame primal. I'm actually going to give it to her, actually. She took the brunt of it. Just found generate three time. Your group crosses the river, 
And as you celebrate, you take notice of the tough, rock-studded expanse of land stretching before you. Your sand skiff was made for moving over the sands, so it'll be difficult to go any farther aboard it. Remodel it. You propose remodeling the sand skiff, and Polka is first to agree. Legol's face is uneasy as he mutters, Don't do anything weird to it. Polka explains that three materials will be needed to convert the sand skiff. After some quick preparations, you decide to split up to locate what you need. The group splits up. Sometimes Ooh, a different it. perspective can be illuminating. Everyone has left the party but Trollis. Polka asks Trollis to find some durable cord. Despite feeling a little sluggish, Trollis takes off to the south, eager to help the group. Find some durable cord on the south side of the wasteland. I wonder if I can equip the cord with you. Ooh. Going to get this. Let's do it. Air punch. So. Oh, well, we can't just have all that. Okay. Trollis wanders the area, searching for some durable cord or rope, but turns up nothing. Find a plan to. Oh, what's up in Trollis? Trollis rummages through her possessions looking for some durable cord. Inside, she finds a whip from her apprenticeship. She must have brought it along by mistake. It once belonged to the ringmaster of the circus. Looking over the whip brings back memories. The ringmaster was a person. Ringmaster smell like animals. Good person. Trollis spends some time reminiscing as she gazes at the whip, but then realizes, not cord, she says, tossing it away. That, that, that. Hey, wait. Whip strong. Could be cord. Realizing that a whip could work in place of a cord, Trollis decides to return to the sand skiff. Polka asks you to locate a long, sturdy pole. Trollis dashes off to the south, so you decide to head north so that you all can cover more ground. Find a long, sturdy stick on the north side of the wasteland. Perhaps because you're by yourself for the first time in a long while, the solitary search makes you feel a bit lonesome. Your thoughts drift inexorably to your comrades. Your thoughts turn to Trollis. Her awkward way of speaking somehow only accentuates her sweetness. On top of that, she cares deeply about her companions and has tenacity to spare. And back when you faced the Flame Primal, she pushed herself so hard to save you from certain death. You can't help but be a little concerned about her.
your thoughts turn to Polka. Polka's breadth of knowledge has been an incredible boon, and also a headache, since said knowledge is the source of his unceasing chatter. While he's typically an affable fellow, you do sometimes spot an unexpected iciness in his expression. Perhaps it comes from his hatred of monsters. Your thoughts turn to Legol. Legol can be somewhat brusque, but deep down he's a supportive person. He seems to care for Polka and Trollis too. From time to time, though, you spot a lonely, sad look on his face, perhaps due to his difficult past being treated like human livestock. Your crew of friends has grown little by little, but with them at your side, you no longer feel as lonely as you once did. While you were lost in thought, a monster has found you. You decide to summon up all your courage and fight. The monster brandishes a weapon whose handle is a long, sturdy-looking pole. The exact kind Polka needs. One shot at it. Oh, too, too slow, buddy. Too slow. That's how it's done. Your battle with the monster has landed you a long, sturdy pole that Polka should be happy with. Having done what you set out to do, you decide to head back to the sand skiff. Oh. Everyone else left a party, but look old. Polka asks Legol to find something that could be used as wheels. Are we gonna make this something from, like, Mad Max? Legol is skeptical that something like that will just be lying around. But he sets off to look, nonetheless. Oh, right. Why did you search? Um... Legol recalls that there was a cart in the mine. Oh my god, Steel we're Grove. going all the way back there? Though hesitant to return to such a dangerous place, he can't make excuses when he thinks of how hard a certain subterran must be searching. He decides to take the sand skiff alone back to the mine. Find a wheel in the mine. Not use bow weapons now. There is indeed a cart in the mine, as Legol recalled, and, as one would imagine, it has wheels. Legol attempts to remove the wheels from the mine cart. But suddenly, a monster emerges from behind it. That's just it. a cute purple. Oh, and an Odin. Or Orc, or whatever they are. With the monster defeated, Legol collects the minecart wheels. The slain monster's eyes are wide open.
Legol gently closes the monster's eyes. Having done what he set out to do, Legol decides to head back to the sand skiff. You cannot use bellwethers. Well, I sold them all, so... Oh, with what Polka requested in hand, you beat feet to meet back up with the others. Back to the sand skiff. The group meets back up, having gathered all three of the things needed to modify the sand skiff. You've brought the sturdy pole, Legol has the wheels, and Trollis has the whip. Are you sure I can use your whip? Polka asks, and Trollis gives a little nod. Accidentally brought lots of wing mess. Trollis turns her bag upside down, and <laughs> as advertised, a number of whips tumble to the ground. Doesn't your ringmaster need these? Legol gets a distant look on his face. A bit of pep in his step, Polka starts zipping around the sand skiff, making modifications. A few hours later. That was a sand car. With the sand skiff mark two. Holy crap, the those are The modifications to the sand skiff are finished. The vehicle should be able to pass through the rocky wasteland without issue now. The group is thrilled, but suddenly, Trollis collapses. Polka hurries over to examine her. Somehow, she's suffering the effects of tinderwater poison. It looks as though she's in a lot of pain. Doesn't fight. You hold Trollis close, but can do little else. This does turn your thoughts back to the events at the Lake of Fire. The battle with the Flame Primal flashes through your mind. During the struggle, Trollis threw herself in harm's way to protect you from the primal's attack. The poison must have entered her body through the wound she sustained in the process. Despite downing some of Polka's medicine, Trollis remains languid. It seems that the effect isn't very strong. She needs a sanitary place to rest, Polka says, and the group decides to try to find one. Continue on and find a place for Talos to rest. The Golden Polka have joined the party. Okay, but with that, we're going to call that an episode. As always, I say, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, your time is valuable, and I don't like to waste it. So I, I do greatly appreciate you hanging out and, and watching. It means a lot. So uh, with that being said, friends, I hope that you are all happy and healthy. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Till then, follow your hearts, be true to yourselves, and uh, stay safe out there. Bye-bye.